again. Joel Joy. wants to play. Okay. Oh, <laughs> wow, your enthusiasm is thrilling. Mm -hmm. You ready, Kendall? Uh-huh. Kendall. Yes. Name three movies oh, with boats. It's Titanic, Love Boat, and... Overboard. Oh, what the hell is Overboard? Okay, a couple things. First, um, you're not Kendall. Number two, Love Boat isn't a movie. Jaws. And, okay. Baby, your turn. Oh, boy. Name three foods that can be used when you want to... Nucky. Chocolate. Champagne. Oysters. Oysters. We helped each other out. Yeah, we're the same. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Who is Jason? Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Ye Old Show. Huge, huge. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi. Wow. You guys like you're, seem like you're in a good mood today. That's good. That's good. Yeah. If you continue to behave like that, Aaron will give you an RV as you leave. Ooh. That's right. That's right. You didn't know about this. just one RV, though. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Let's start with this. If you ever wanted to live inside a ride at a Disney park, now you can kind of. But And also, I need to borrow some money from some of you because a house on the market in Georgia Look at this, is a replica of the Haunted Mansion uh, at both Disneyland and Disney World. It was built in 1996 and the original owner purposely made sure that the home's dimensions and architecture closely matched those of the legendary ride. Even the iron details match. Uh, the design of the original home. Now, the home is in a gated community. It has six bedrooms, six baths, it has a pool room, an apartment over the garage. And if one of you would like to go in on this with me, the, thank you. Row two is thinking about it. The listing, $2.2 million. That's it. No takers on that one. No, no, no. Let's start the music, Leo. Let's do that. Yes. No takers. Uh. Happy Tuesday. Thank God we survived April Fools. I know. I'm I mean, so you glad. almost didn't. I I did not. Did I don't. Jello. Yeah, I did not like April Fools, but there are a few jokes I will tell you about that were actually good. But let me. I have a couple uh, stories today. L let me start with one, and this is a this is a celebration of moms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I met a mom over the weekend. At, I met a mom at Walt Disney World. Speaking of Walt Disney World, she is like Captain Mom. Mm -hmm. I, it was uh, middle of the day on Saturday and uh, I was starting to get a little bit of a headache. And, <laughs> I'm sorry, what's so funny, Kendall? Why would Jason have a headache on a Saturday? I don't know, Friday night? Okay, audience, I don't need you making up your own stuff too. I don't know. Okay, fine, I may have had a, a few cocktails. And yeah, and uh, we were we were at the we were at uh, Disney uh, Disney World and we were on Frozen, <laughs> and uh, Let yeah. It go. And that ride as adults is way more fun when you're a little tipsy. Woo! 
uh, because if you think I'm all buttoned up, you should see me on that ride. I sing on that ride. He uh, lets it yeah, go. I lets sing it "Let go. It Go." Uh, I'm like a big kid, anyway. So I'm waiting in line, and I, my voice does carry, and I do recognize that. And I'm standing in line with Colin, and I go, "Ooh," I go, "I'm I, I'm getting a headache." And mm -hmm. I said, um, "Do you have any ibuprofen?" And I'm not joking, audience. Without missing a beat, this mom in front of me, she turns around. She goes, "It's like Aaron Schwab." She goes, "Did you say ibuprofen?" Uh huh. <laughs> And I went, I went like this, and I go, yeah? And she goes, hi. She goes, you don't know me, but I'm a mom of two. I'm a registered nurse, and I'm not crazy. She goes, so well, <laughs> if, you, if you would accept a gift of ibuprofen from me, I, she goes, I would be delighted. And the husband looks at me, and the husband goes, she's not crazy. And I said, okay. <laughs> and then this, now this is the part. This gets better. Not only did she do the Aaron Schwab, hi, but... <laughs> Then she grabbed out of her large stroller this tackle box looking thing and she opened up this box and it had every medication you could want. It was like every, she was so prepared. Ibuprofen, Tums. She was like a walking CVS. She had, she had ibuprofen and Tylenol, baby Tylenol, uh, 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 Flintstone vitamins, uh, 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 Tums, and acids. Oh, Ozempic. I mean, she had everything in there. Everything. I mean, uh, <laughs> you're eating a lot, Jace. You know, I was just, she had everything. She didn't have Ozempic. Anyway, so I look at her and I go, I love you for so many reasons. I go, I have never seen a mom that prepared with, with a Walgreens, a, a portable Walgreens. She was, I need to be prepared and I'm a nurse. And I said, I love you. And she was, how many would you like? Uh, how many milligrams? And I go, I don't talk in milligrams. Can I just have four, please? Uh, yeah, so she, she gives me four. But to whoever that mom is, I appreciate you and moms like you. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Leo, let's get started. Time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. I think you're going to be like that. I think you'll be prepared like that. Oh, I'm ready already. I think you are, you. yeah. First up, it was the blockbuster we couldn't really escape last summer. But not everyone was a fan of Barbie, and that includes Shakira Shakira. She may, now to us, and I know that there are people that criticize the movie, but to me, I, I personally believe that she kind of missed the point of the movie. Why am I bringing this up now? Well, this was everywhere yesterday. In a magazine interview, Shakira said that, she, that her sons, quote, absolutely hated it and felt like the movie was emasculating. Shakira agreed with them, she said, to a certain ex uh, uh, extent. Her two boys, by the way, are 9 and 11, and she says she's raising them to feel powerful while respecting women, which... That's how I was raised. Well, uh, she was, quote, I like pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men to protect and, and provide. Now, Shakira also says she thinks men have a purpose in society and women have another purpose. Quote, we compliment each other and that compliment should not be lost. I think what, in my opinion, what was lost for Shakira was the whole point of the movie. I'm a dude. <laughs> I'm a dude and... Uh, <laughs> And I did not feel that way. I, I, I guess I'm confident enough in who I am to not be threatened by a movie about dolls. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I just... When you boil it down. <laughs> and I'm not throwing shade. I just mean I'm not taking it that seriously. Let me refer, I, I am take. I think the themes of it were not anti-men. It wasn't at all. I didn't take it that way. Right. What, your thought? I didn't either, and I think that the point in that you don't have to be emasculating to promote feminism, 100% true, of course. I don't agree with her take on the movie. I agree with what she says there. I also think that sometimes for us here, things can get lost a little culturally. She's from Colombia. She is very feminist. She all the entire article is about how like much she promotes being a strong-willed, independent woman. But her idea of what that looks like might be different than someone here in the states. Absolutely, and that's fair. That's why right. I, I, I all. 
I also think it's funny. Like, who cares? It was right. everywhere last night. I'm like, what? This isn't that big. Who cares right. if Shakira's son didn't like the movie? Right. I have people in my life that I don't right. give a rat's rear. Right. I don't care. Right. Yeah. And that whole article is about like how much she promotes like being a strong-willed woman and like she helps children and build schools in yes. Colombia for impoverished children. Like, and that was all that was taken out. That's of it. all that was. That's why I hate when people just write people off right. because I don't care if she, I still I can still like her. The two right. things can coexist in my little mind. Anyway, right. next in the dish, she was the title star of Malcolm in the Middle. Y'all remember Frankie Muniz? I loved him in My Dog Skip. I love that movie. Uh, well, he's now revealing some juicy details about what he kind of describes as a tense working environment on the set of that show. Frankie was recently. He's coming back right now. The reason he's around right now, he's a contestant on the Australian edition of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. And Frankie shared a story about why, if you're a fan of the show, you might have noticed there are two episodes that Malcolm is not in the middle. He's not in there. He's not in two episodes. Frankie says tensions reached a boiling point and he had to walk off the set of his own show. Now, he didn't mention any specific names, only saying there were certain people being controlling, rude, and disrespectful. And he was so mortified. He was so mortified by seeing people afraid to stand up for themselves. And he also didn't care. Uh, he said, I also didn't care if they told me I was never coming back because it was worth it to me. And audience, it does help that he's Malcolm of Malcolm in the middle. And, you know, but I, I do, if there's a cautionary tale though, um, and this is a pop culture deep cut, Frankie. They did take Shirley out of Laverne and Shirley in the last year. So I'm just saying it can happen. Lassie. But yeah. Woo! I'm Been a lot of lassies, you know? <laughs> I know. If you like that. Yeah, if you like that. I, I, yeah, that's great. <laughs> that was perfect. But yeah, Thank yeah. You. They could just get another Jason up in here. You know what I mean? Just get another guy named Jason. That'd be fun. Oh, thank you, audience. It's really nice of you. They're very tender. I like this audience today. Nice way to be. Yeah. Here. Hey, before we head to break, speaking of the audience, happy birthday to everyone celebrating in our birthday club. They get that collector's pen, sash, and up to twenty dollars of free play at Grand Casino. Lots more to come back right after this, everybody. Thank you. Well, welcome back, folks. Of course, late night hosts had to pull some uh, April Fool's Day pranks uh, Monday night. I'm glad, again, I hate the day, but this is fun. Jimmy Kimmel, this is so good. Come back to the TV. It's a little bit longer of a clip, but it's worth it. Jimmy Kimmel enlisted the help of the, of the great Billy Crystal to trick Jimmy's cousin, uh, Mickey, who works on the show, like with the, with the guests. Billy came in early. Here's the thing. Billy came in early and told Mickey, uh, Mickey that he got a shot from a doctor that caused him to fall asleep randomly and he and he needed Mickey to help him uh, stay awake. Watch this. Welcome back. <laughs> if, you know what? I, I'm so thirsty. Okay, what do you want? Uh, probably c Coke? Maybe Coke, Coke. Or, or lemonade or something, or if there's any vodka, one little shot. That, that, that helps me out. Wait, in, in one of those? Or just whatever, just yeah, whatever they have. That'd be good. Bagels coming, um, Coke on ice. I think that's a good idea. All right. Coke sort of waters it down, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. <laughs> oh. oh, God. That was so good.
<laughs> later on, you have to see the whole clip. It's so long. That's just what later on, Jimmy had an impersonator call Billy and act like the president and was talking to him. And then she starts talking to the fake. It, it was, oh it's really, really, really good. More April's Day Fools, uh, more April Fool's Day pranks on TV. So if you watched Monday's episode of Wheel of Fortune, Vanna did not come out after the open with Pat Sajak. Instead, Pat was swapped out with an Oscar winner. Look. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the stars of our show. Jared Leto and Vanna White. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you and uh, have a great show. See you <laughs> I love. I love. Like he didn't even. They don't even acknowledge it. It's just like Jared Leto's out there. All the people, all the people playing wheel are just clapping, clapping and along. Smiling, yeah. Like, no big deal. <laughs> Look at Jared's hair. I know it's so long; it could braid it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a, that's a good-looking guy. He is. I wish he'd cut it though. Like he really could use a trim, trim. A little you know? bit. Yeah. Give me a scissors. Go to the Fantastic Sam's. Uh, yeah. Shortly after Wheel, uh, shortly after that, they switched back and uh, Pat continued on as normal. I remember Price is Right did that. Oh my goodness! Nine, ten years ago, back when uh, uh, Bob uh, Barker was around, mm -hmm. Drew had been on the show for a good number of years, and they did that. I, I still think Price is Right has one of the best intros of any television show. Great music, and the crowd starts cheering, and then those those accordion doors open. Yeah. And but anyway, so they do the open, and uh, the announcer goes, and uh, now this, you know, I forgot if they refer to Drew as the star of the show. Now in the star of the show, Drew, uh, Bob Barker, and Bob People comes out. <laughs> People lost their mind, and Bob had not, yeah. Right. Uh, Bob had not hosted the show, like I said, at that point for six to seven years, but nice oh, it is. To see Bob holding that mic, that would be a treat. I never, I never got to that show. Aww. I never, I never got. Yeah, I, but no, I never, I never went to a taping of The Price Is Right. Hmm. It's one of those things I regret. Like I should have went. I was at when CBS, yeah. but I didn't go in. I just went to CBS to buy a Dallas T-shirt at the uh, gift store. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, I know it was the only reason I was there. Next in the dish, gone are the sparkly hair bows, ponytails, and rainbow glitter, Aww. folks. I'm not talking about me. Uh, Jojo, Jojo Siwa is a bad girl now. Oh. That's right. <laughs> I get paid to read this. I really do. The Dance Moms alum brought the drama to the red carpet. Look at this. Uh, at the iHeartRadio Music Awards on Monday night, Jojo wore a crystallized black bodysuit with combat boots and uh, edgy black makeup. It's the same look from a video uh, uh, for her new song, Karma, that, by the way, comes out on Friday. So, yeah, I mean, it's a publicity thing. Mm -hmm. I just love all the headlines. She's bad now. It's one outfit. <laughs> She's bad. It's bad one girl. outfit. I know there are rumors sort of about her, but uh, whatever. There's drama, I guess, or alleged drama. But, but the outfit, it's one outfit. I know. I lived through the 80s with Madonna. You can't scare me. <laughs> you can't, right, Aaron? You can't scare us. We went through like a virgin. We went through Papa Don't Preach, like a prayer. What was the cone boobies? The cone erotica, the mm. the sex book that uh, I cut myself on and it. I, I uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You cut yourself on a Madonna sex book? Yeah. In 1991, she released a book called Oh, and if you think people clutch pearls now, <laughs> and they do. Oh, remember that? Oh, people were just like thinking the it was the. But Madonna re released a book called Sex, and it was <laughs> metal. It would no, the cover it was metal, and I, my friend Ann bought it. Yeah. And uh, I went over to her house. I couldn't wait to look at it. I'm like, ooh, boobies, you know. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I uh, Woo! <laughs> oh, that's that's what they look like. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm flipping through it, and right away she puts it in my hand. I go to open it and I immediately cut my palm, like right, yeah. And oh. she goes, "You've had the book in your hand 20 seconds, and you already I sliced Sacrifice. my hand open." Sacrifice yeah. Sacrificed to open anyway. the book. I thought you were flipping the pages too but, fast. But all, yeah. A paper cut. But on the JoJo thing, can you blame? Uh, you know, Miley went through this when you right. when you have this good girl persona. They, they grow the, the the women and the the boy. They grow up and right. they want to rebel. I right. mean, it's 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 not breaking news. It's fun. Well, even, what was that, a year ago? A year ago, JoJo was here. She was and it's here. not like she was wearing 
bows and pink sparkly shoes then either. Yeah. So it's just been a transition remember, into her bad girl era. Remember like yeah, Miley, remember she swung on that big bow. I came in you know like I mean? a I, I just, you know, ball. Half naked. So yeah, she swung like on construction equipment. Oof. I, you know. I always thought that would hurt. I never went like, through that phase. Lady parts on a ball swinging back. Ooh. Okay, no. <laughs> Lord knows I'm not touching that. I'm not, yeah, I, yeah. Next in the dish. Next in the dish, is there trouble in paradise for the Golden Bachelor, Gary? Yeah. Gary and his new wife, Teresa. Well, according to a report from TMZ, Gary uh, and Teresa are living separately. Now, now, at first you think, oh, wow. But listen to this, though. So Gary, uh, uh, Gary currently lives in his lake house in Indiana while Teresa resides in New Jersey or the other way around. I don't know. Sources say there are a couple reasons for their long distance uh, relationship. They don't want to deal with the hassle of moving. Teresa has a job as a compliance officer uh, and they're both close with their families, but apparently they're still quote madly in love and want to make the long distance marriage work. <laughs> This is why, the, it, like, that's why they do the 20 and 30 something bachelor because those, you know, they, they don't, right. there's not a lot of roots, though they can go anywhere. Uh -huh. These people, it makes sense to me. Yeah. They have, they're, they're rooted. Mm -hmm. It's been the biggest issue with The Bachelor in general is that oftentimes they break up because the, one of them's like, well, I don't want to leave my home and my career. And uh, to your point, they're in their 20s and 30s. Imagine that. I mean, that would be really difficult to ask someone to do. Yes. Your children are there. Your whole life is there. Both, and both, I think, have a little bit of money. He owned, what, uh, Geary owned, like, a burger place or something. I mean, he has a little bit of money. I don't know, but I know it's not a vegan cheese company. It's not like a yesterday. vegan cheese company. Yeah. But no, but you, yeah. But... They, they can fly back and forth. Yeah. I just, yeah, Why I'm still not? bitter. I wanted, you know, I don't like the way he treated Leslie, so I'm a little jaded about him. <laughs> Next in the dish, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has seen some cameos from famous faces over the years. Um, uh, I remember Jamie Lee Curtis was on last year, I believe, or the year before. Well, now one legendary actress and singer is ready for her moment on R-H-O-B-H. Bette Midler, Bette Midler pitched herself for the new season. She <laughs> tweeted, this is not a joke. This isn't April Fool's, it's April 2nd. Uh, <laughs> Bet tweeted, quote, is it too late for me to become a Real Housewife of Beverly Hills? I've never watched it, but I'm in the mood to talk some S and get paid for it. A dream. <laughs> Bet also has an idea for her tagline. You know, the housewives always yes. have taglines. She goes, those beaches don't know what's about to hit them. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's great. I get it. That's I great. It. I get it. <laughs> Andy Cohen said, let's go. Did yeah, about Andy time. responded, right? Yeah, he said, about time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be said. so good. Can you imagine? Even if Bet was a friend of the show, yeah. you know, which you're not you don't get you're not in the credits, you're just you're around for events. Right. Put Bet in there for a couple episodes and let her stir up some trouble. God, I want her in her like Sanderson sisters era though, of like Hmm, my pretty. <laughs> like, uh -uh. I want some CC Bloom up in there. I want some beaches. <laughs> I want CC Bloom was her character in Beaches, but stunned silent from the audience on that one. They but, yeah, did love Beaches. Beaches apparently. reference. It's all right. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, Dave Schrader and more when we return. Back in a moment, everybody. He serves up the scariest stories. Paranormal investigator, ghost hunter, and our friend Dave Schrader is back to talk about his new book. And then a little bit later, it's a story of ibuprofen and one lost item. That and more when we come back. Welcome back to the show. Wow. Our guest today is a paranormal radio and TV host who's investigated strange and supernatural encounters all over the country for more than 20 years. And it's shocking because he's only 30. And now he's... That was for you, Dave. And now he's written them down in a new book called Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness. Audience, give it up for our friend Dave Schrader. Hi, buddy. Thank you. How you doing? How you doing? Good. God. You're, you're fancy now. I have to refer to you as author Dave Schrader. Well, what? I we, we can add it to my title. I'm trying to build up so it's now a Golden Telly Award winning international TV sensation and author and friend of Morgan Fairchild, Dave Schrader. Dave Schrader, that's right. That's it. 
Um, Hard to get all that on a business yeah. card. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you, buddy. Um, what? Why? Why? No, I just mean. <laughs> let me start with a simple one. Why a book? What made you want to do it? Are you sick of it? Are you sick of people coming up to you at uh, Aldi and asking you the the ghost stories? Uh, no, actually, I, I love sharing them. And the thing is, I'd. I'd taken stories people have given me over the last 18 years of doing paranormal radio shows, and I've shared them on my programs, and we did this thing called Theater of the Mind, where I would take your story, I would flesh it out a little bit with sound effects and, and uh, music, and then we would record them kind of in a dramatic Theater of the Mind style. And then I just had them languishing in a drawer, and I thought, well, that's really a shame, because the one thing I learned doing the radio show and TV show for so long is, how connected people feel when they hear other people's stories. And when they get to know, maybe I'm not so alone. I've had experiences like this, and I thought I was insane, but to know other people are having these same experiences helps to bridge that gap and make everybody feel a little better. So instead of just letting the stories sit, I brought them back out, and I've got a couple of my own personal stories, one about a haunted doll. I don't know if you're familiar, but... Yeah, yeah, I, um, I, I deal with haunted dolls on time to time. Yeah, um, Dave, we are aware of that fact here in the studio. Uh, <laughs> if you missed that episode, uh, Dave brought not one, not two, not three, not four, but five haunted dolls on this very couch. And during the segment audience, the one of the damn things turned around and looked at me. Uh, and yeah. Can you blame it? I know, whatever. And then we sent them home with photographer Eric. Mm -hmm. And uh, their marriage has never been the same since. Uh, uh, Tanya, his wife, is still not speaking to me over that one. But <laughs> no, is it all, um, all, all scary stories? No, actually, there's a, a wide variety. I didn't want it to just be a book of ghost stories or monster stories. So I, I kind of mixed it up. There's time slip phenomena. There's near-death experiences. There are ghostly experiences. There are the black-eyed kids, the bloody bones man. So so a lot of these sound terrifying, but it's more kind of this, yeah, right? It sounds sounds edgier, but I, I, some of the stories have just got a really nice Twilight Zone feel to them. And then some are creepy, so I want to get into your brain at night and have you thinking about that just before you fall asleep. I, I want to I ask you about um, a couple specific stories, but I want sure. more broadly, though, I know that you believe, do you believe in all of these categories? Do you believe in ghosts, aliens, and UFOs? Yes. You believe in all those. Okay. What do you think in your experience? What I just thought about this. What do you think, like our audience here, what do you think it's easier for the for a mortal, not you, a mere mortal to believe in? The existence of ghosts or the existence of aliens and and and, and UFOs? I don't think it's uh, one or the other. I think it's mutually kind of uh, inclusive because we as a people know that there's just too much out there. The, the universe is ever expanding and to believe that there is only life on one little bead in this massive sea is ridiculous. I think most people would say, I believe that. Are they coming to visit us? That's another story. But I've seen things I can't explain flying in the skies over Trout Lake, Washington. I've had experiences with spirits at many different locations around the world. And I think maybe the ghosts are a little bit easier for people to lean into because they've had that moment where they feel connected to somebody they've lost after they've passed on. What did you see at Trout Lake? I went out to, I was listening to a late night radio show, Coast to Coast AM, that yeah. I, eventually I'd get to host for five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, this gentleman, James Gilliland, was talking about how if you came out on a clear night, you had a 90 to 95% chance of seeing things flying over his property. So being an investigator and a host, I'm like, I'm going. I showed up unannounced, had three days there. And on the third night, after watching the skies and seeing things move that could be satellites, I'm not sure, you know, but they'd move and then bank out at crazy speeds and then stop and then go in a totally different direction. I don't think that's how satellites work, but I'm not a man of science. Yeah. I'm a man of wonder, right? So I don't know what's going on. The last night as I'm staring, out at this kind of dormant volcano that is the hotbed. I, I went out in the field and turned around and watched the other direction. And from behind this bank of long, tall pine trees, this thing came fluttering out. It looked like a blue glowing stingray. And it kind of swam through the sky. And it was so weird and surreal. I thought he was projecting something on a screen between those trees to try to confound people. So I went running towards it. And I'm throwing rocks between the trees, waiting to hear that. Of, and it wasn't. And I go back to James Gilliland and he goes, what'd you see? And I said, it looked like a glowing blue stingray. And he goes, oh yeah, those are half biological craft. That's how they get in between dimensions. 
And he was just so matter of fact about it. And I had no better explanation, but it was just How like, How quickly what? did you get back on the plane? I, I, I just, yeah. It was the next day I went back. Uh, but what is weird is that night, I, I'm, I get into my room. I always lock my door and put the chain on and the little latch and, and everything. And I got into bed and I woke up to the sound of something falling in my room. And I sat up and there was a chair knocked over and I heard the door shut. And I'm like, what? And I got up thinking, am I just dreaming? And I went and the little uh, chain was still swinging on the door. So I don't know if the observer became the observed for that night and they came to look at me since I'd spent the last three nights looking at them. I'm sure they were much more disappointed than I was. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, well, this kind of answer is I was gonna ask you, and it seems like I'm just poking fun or being goofy, I'm really not. Do you think they're already here? Like, do you think, like maybe the woman in row two, do you think she's, you know, somebody in our audience today, they're in a human suit and they're spying on us? I don't think just one of them is an alien sitting over there. I'm pretty sure half of your audience yeah, but, I mean, yeah. is from another they're planet. They're fun, so yeah, I yeah. hope so. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 But no, but all kidding aside, do, I, you th do you think they've been here? I do. As a matter of fact, uh, Scott Walter, who's another fellow Minnesota yeah. uh, TV personality and, and lecturer, he has a bunch of ancient alien artifacts that were dug up out of Mexico. And although you can't really date the rock, he can date the uh, type of, of resin and things that they use to put these mosaics together that are very UFO and alien looking. And you should definitely have him on to showcase some of these pieces are crazy. But he's been able to date the glue substance that they used some of it's 10 to 12,000 years old. So to show these depictions of flying craft and beings that look like the greys with the big bulbous head and the black eyes on pieces of antiquity that date back 10 to 12,000 years tells me we've not been alone for a long time. Well, we're gonna search the audience in this commercial break and we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. More with Dave Schrader. I... We're back, more with Dave Schrader. By the way, by the way, in that commercial break, uh, Dave did a scan of the audience. There's seven to 10 of them in here today, right now. <laughs> seven to 10 audience members that were, oh, right Tony. there, there's Tony. <laughs> well, you know Tony's one right there, there he is. <laughs> a suspender wearing alien, I love it. Love Work, you, Dave. It worked for Mork. It worked for Mork. That's yep. right. Yep. Where's your egg, Tony? Oh, well, there's perfect. Yeah, a girlfriend named Mindy. Okay, let's talk about some of your stories. Uh, tell the folks someone about your own house. Yeah, so I lived up near the Egan area, and we were renting a home. Uh, and suburb of Minneapolis yes, for those not suburb watching. Of Minneapolis, yeah. And we were uh, renting this place. We had a lot of weird experiences going on and uh, a big family. So we have kids spread throughout the house and our little guy was in this room. He didn't want to sleep in there because of the man that kept leaning out of the closet. And then he would hear laughter under his bed. So it unnerved him. You know, of course, being a paranormal investigator, I take what he's saying is seriously. So we let him move down in the basement with his other two big brothers. And I took that over as my radio station studio, right? And I was doing my shows from there. And we had moved, I bought a house a block and a half away, moved into the house, everything but my studio has been moved out. And I get done with my show, two o'clock at night in the morning and I go, all right, thanks a lot for tuning in, we'll be back again tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. I hang up my headset, turn off my mic, and all of a sudden I hear the front door open and shut and somebody starts walking around. So I text my wife, I said, Are you, did you come over to the old house? She's like, no, it's two o'clock, I'm in bed. And I go, well, where are the kids? Well, they're all sleeping, it's two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, oh no. So I duck in the closet and I call 911. And nine, cause the closet's where you need to be if somebody breaks into your home, that's my yeah, thoughts, it, yeah. I learned that in Halloween, uh, yeah, yeah. In part one, yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, the cops show up, they come into the house, they scan the entire place, they come knock on the door, and I jump out of the closet quickly so I could maintain some civility, right? And they're <laughs> like, what happened? And I told them, I said, there was, it sounded like somebody's coming in. I figured they saw us moving over the last couple of weeks. Maybe they came in to see if they could get anything. And they're like, Mr. Schrader, all the doors and windows are closed from the inside and everything's locked. So I think you're okay. And all of a sudden we start hearing. With the cops there. Right, and they both put their hands up at me, their eyes get huge and they go, we'll be right back and out come the guns and they go back out in the house and I get back in the closet and duck. <laughs> this is the money maker. I can't take 
Why is that? Yeah, so you funny? can't. Yeah. Anyway, they come back up like a few minutes later and they're like, well, I think we should just all leave together. Let's just all go. And I'm like, well, what'd you find? And they're like, we didn't find anything. I said, but you said all the doors and windows were locked and we heard the footsteps are like, yeah. And we heard them while we were standing in the kitchen. They were walking around us. No. So let's just go. And I'm like, let's just go. And he goes, you can't shoot what you can't see. Let's go. So we left. So that was my, my, yeah, the last night in my haunted house in Egan. And if you're the new owners of that house, yeah. Okay, before we go, before we go, let me, but I, maybe some people are thinking this. Do you think because you do do this a lot and that you are connected, do you think the spirits are just more apt to connect with you? Because you're more open to it? Yeah, I've been, you know, I've, I've had experiences my entire life. I've been yeah. really centered on investigating and trying to make connections for the last 20 years. So I think when you resonate that way and you put yourself out there, and I do it in a place of love and empathy for the spirit realm, I don't, I, I try not to walk in a place of yeah. fear unless, unless you're in a in closet in well, Egan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh, but that's, yeah, I, so I, I do believe that that's what helps bring me better connection with the spirit realm. Get this book, everybody. Give it up for Dave Schrader to order a copy. It's called Theater of the Mind. Head to Dave's website, darknessradio.com. Follow Dave on social, too, and uh, listen to his shows. Give it up one more time for Dave Schrader. My latest uh, Disney adventure that features one lost item. When we come back, back in a moment. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, my friend. Have a good one. Oh. We'll see you soon. Thank you, buddy. Welcome back. Thanks again to Dave Schrader. Well, welcome back. Uh, Disney World in Orlando. Uh, and by the way, we want to thank all of our affiliates, including our affiliate in Orlando. They're very supportive of our show, and we appreciate it. Uh, Orlando is basically like a second home for us. I always come back with fun stories and uh, that I want to share with you because I figure this. I go so often, why not make it, uh, why not bring you guys along with me and tape stuff that I think you might find fun, especially if you don't like Disney World or you don't get to go. Um, I'm lucky enough, and I never take it for granted but I want to share it with you. So this story, you guys can relate even if it's not at Disney World. Uh, this is our last day, and I'm going to call uh, the, the, uh, the story uh, Lost Items. Oh. Or, yeah, and we are uh, about three, four hours from flying back on Sunday back to Minneapolis. And uh, keep in mind, when we go, we push it. We're experts. Mm -hmm. uh, we're experts at it. And if the plane is leaving at 6, we stay into the we stay at the parks until about four and uh, oh my god yeah. you're giving me I know. anxiety i give believe me i give all my family anxiety when we say that but oh. we're we have uh tsa pre-check we have clear blah 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 so uh, we decided to go on one more ride and we went on tower of terror now if you thank you for clapping it's no thank you i know it's no that's my favorite no i appreciate tower of terror is a ride at Walt Disney World's uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios. And it's a Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. And it's an elevator ride where you're in there with about 12 people. You're in an elevator shaft. You sit down, you buckle in, and it shoots you up and then drops you. Nope. Uh, and drops you again and then shoots you back up. It's uh, been around uh, for, I think, 20, 20 years, 25 years. It's my favorite ride. So uh, Colin and I go on this ride, and Colin is wearing uh, like uh, athletic running pants, you know, okay. comfortable yep. pants. Athleisure wear. Athleisure wear. And, uh, and Colin has one of those phones where th there's a magnetic wallet on the back of it, and he has his uh, credit card, and then he has his uh, ID and yeah. the thing. So we go on Tower of Terror, uh -oh. and Colin and I walk very fast. I walk very fast. We do the ride, nah, we scream, whatever. Nah. Uh, we, we get off the ride and I'm walking to the area where you get your little photo of mm -hmm. you screaming. And I turn around and there's no Colin. I'm like. Did you leave him did, on the ride? I thought to myself, did I leave him on there? Like I, you know, and did Rod Serling take him? Is he in the twilight zone now? So uh, on my uh, watch, I get a text from him that said, come to the loading area immediately. And I was like, what? Okay. So I go back to where we come and he lost his phone. Oh. 
And what happened was the thrust of the ride yeah. and the slipperiness of the pan Pants, of the, the his phone slipped right out and is at the bottom of the tower of terror. Oh, so he texts you on his watch. He texts me on okay. his watch. So I'm looking, he goes, ping my phone, see where my phone is. Yeah. And it's not funny, but now it's all resolved so we can laugh. I ping the phone and it, all you see is the Tower of Terror and then Colin's phone is like <laughs> just at the bottom of it with his ID and everything. For so the now plane. for the mm -hmm. plane. So we're now a couple hours from leaving Orlando. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, he's stressed. I'm stressed. We're trying to figure this out. I keep calling the phone to try to get it ringing. Oh, so if someone's maybe. on it, the Disney folks, you know, when you lose something, I'm also telling you this because this is a cautionary tale if you go to the parks, they do not look for stuff until the end of the park day. Oh. So we had to go fill out a form. He filled out a form and uh, we get to the airport and luckily we have clear. Oh, uh, so it's just your face. They, it's just our face. So, but they do randomized, they do randomized ID checks. So oh, folks, God. we get, we get to the airport and I'm the more effusive one. Shocking, right? <laughs> uh, Colin is very stoic and you know, so we're standing in that line and <laughs> Colin is praying to every religious figure. <laughs> He's like, please don't, please don't, please. So we scan our eyes and it's going boop, boop, boop. And it popped up randomized ID for me. And oh so gosh. I whipped out the car. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. And <laughs> so we got on and he's fine and he got a new phone. But to right now, I could pull up my phone and Colin's phone is still pinging at the bottom of the Tower of Terror. I, at, yeah. God, I wonder how many phones and wallets and keys and like important things are down there. Because oh. I mean, they must not go down there everyone yeah we don't know where it is I don't know if it's at the bottom of the ride vehicle I right. I don't know if it's at the very bottom but just a cautionary tale and I'm being serious about this if you go on any of these rides secure your stuff don't put stuff uh, in your in your pockets put it in a locker put it in a purse if there's a pouch in front just fanny packet yeah fanny packet do whatever you have to do because even Wow. Even experts like us can yeah. have a, a little bit of trouble. So, yeah, but now yesterday he spent all day getting a new phone, he had a new ID. It's all good. Uh, but if you're watching from Walt Disney World and you find the phone, you better call us. Thank Please. you very much. <laughs> we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. I beg. Oh. Welcome back. Oh, welcome back to the show. We always say this. We have a great, uh, we have a great time. The studio audience is my favorite aspect of the show. Come join us. Tickets are completely free. Head to Eventbrite.com and search the Jason Show. There's also a cool Eventbrite app. You can use it for events all over the country, concerts and stuff. So you, you should have the app anyway. Uh, pick the date. Join the fun. You're in by 9:30 Central, and you're out by 11:15. And if you come to the Twin Cities from other cities, uh, let us know. I'll, girl, I'll tell you where to eat. I'll tell you where to stay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I will hook you up. We'll be right back. Back after this, everybody. <laughs> go to Red Cow, then go. Welcome back. We are glad you're her. I have uh, another thing I'll share with you uh, probably next week. Uh, you know, one of the things that's great about the parks, there's always new food. Mm -hmm. We are a food try and show, uh, and they have mixed uh, um, uh, churros with Coca Cola. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that sounds good. Here's what I'll try to do. I thought about this. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll pre tape it there, but I'm like, Kendall's going to want one. I guess I am. So what I'll do is I'll get one right before we board the plane and I'll put it in my carry on and we'll have to warm it up the next day. Is that okay with you? I mean, what, what do you want me to do? I mean, yeah. I suppose. What? Can we put it in like an oven though so it gets the what? crunch? Um, I, I mean, this do you see fast an oven field around field here? What, yeah. This is what fast food field trip would we, be. Aside. We used to have an oven in this, uh, literally where right, right here, here, there used to be a kitchen right here, but we don't know. But you know what? Just for you, yeah. I will find you an Thank oven. You. I will warm Easy that up bake. for you. Yeah. Hey, tomorrow on the show, more ghost stories. 
Another paranormal expert from the TV show Ghost Hunters joins us with his haunted encounters. Plus, she's a New York Times bestselling author. Abby Jimenez will uh, be here with her new book. Shut up! Yes! Why do you tell me? You're on the show! I, I remember! Go out there and be yourself! So because sad. nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. I'm gonna go take Kendall to our show meetings now. Bye, everybody. I'm so you're sad. on the show!